All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Officer uh, Anwar Sela. I'm the Community Outreach Officer for Dunwoody Police Department. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for joining in that's on here so far. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, coronavirus uh, scams, the types of scams that are going around the country uh, right now. Uh, we're only in April, uh, yet there's been thousands and thousands of victims of scam uh, relating to the coronavirus. So we really think it's important for uh, uh, the citizens of America and really people around the world to understand that there are predators out there that are uh, definitely um, scamming a lot of people. So I think it's important for our law enforcement community and uh, even you at home to share this and share any information you can that's from a reliable source on how to avoid scams. So uh, once again, I just want to thank everybody for, for joining in on us. Uh, that's why we're really doing this, because it's it's really going around uh, pretty bad around the country. Uh, I've got with me Sergeant Robert Parsons, uh, Dunwoody Police Department, and also uh, Harold Kurtz, who is from the Federal Trade Commission. He's going to be giving some really good pointers uh, and some very good advice as far as what we've got going on. So real quick, I'm just going to share my screen here with everyone. <clears throat> and once again, I'm going to be pre presenting. Sergeant Parsons is on here with me, and uh, we have Harold Kurtz, who is uh, with the Federal Trade Commission, that's also going to be uh, presenting as well. Um, as far as, uh, like I said earlier, the Federal Trade Commission has been receiving thousands and thousands of uh, complaints relating to the coronavirus. And uh, so right now I really want to, uh, I'm really glad that uh, Mr. Kurtz has joined in on us because he's from the, the FTC. And so uh, he can give us some really good insight on what they're seeing uh, on their side uh, because they're, they're, they're processing thousands of complaints. So I'm just gonna turn it over to Mr. Kurtz uh, briefly so that he can actually give you guys some in insight as far as what's going on and what they're seeing as well. So. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for joining in on us, Mr. Kurtz. It's, uh, you know, you've, you're using your time just to uh, share with our citizens some really valuable information. So I just want to thank you for joining uh, Dunwoody Police Department as we try to help the citizens out there uh, to be safe. Officer Silla, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, to join you tonight. Uh, this is an important service that you are. Uh, doing for the uh, Dunwoody and the Georgia communities, and, and uh, we appreciate your efforts. Uh, just briefly, um, uh, to put this in context, uh, we get uh, over 5 million complaints a year from all over the United States on various uh, frauds and concerns uh, from uh, citizens. Uh, Georgia is typically in the top 10 in terms of numbers of complaints. Uh, that come from consumers and in terms of uh, the businesses that are complained about. Um, for Georgia in the past year, we've had about 72,000 fraud complaints and about 80 some thousand complaints that are do not call complaints. That is anyone who has a number on the uh, phone number on the do not call list uh, and gets a call from someone that uh, they're not anticipating and have no desire uh, they can file a complaint about uh, that particular number. As Officer Silla has mentioned, uh, so far we have over 18,000 complaints related uh, to the coronavirus. Uh, most of those have come in just in the last uh, six or eight weeks. Uh, and there are a couple of major categories that those relate to. Uh, one concerns uh, treatments or cures for the coronavirus. And Sergeant Silla will have some slides to show everyone in a few minutes that relate to some specifics on that. Uh, the other major category is in economic stimulus uh, scams. That is uh, small businesses or even individuals that are supposed to be getting money from Congress because of the coronavirus uh, uh, concerns uh, are getting uh, scammed out of some of the money that is coming to them. So we're trying to stop uh, uh, that from happening to the, to the extent possible. 
one of the things to be concerned about are rumors and information, uh, misinformation. And uh, what we hope folks will do uh, when they see information about the coronavirus is to determine who the message is from, uh, what does the message want uh, you to do, and what evidence is there behind uh, the message. Uh, you really have to ask yourself those questions about anything that comes to your attention uh, in this area. Uh, one of the uh, uh, general rules of thumb that we have is that if you're approached, uh, especially by telephone or uh, by email or even text, uh, if there's a request to give out your personal information, such as your credit card number, your bank account number, your social security number, uh, those types of specific personal information pieces, um, you should never give those out. Uh, the only time that you would give them out is if you're actually contacting a business to make a purchase and then you may have to input some of that information into the business's uh, uh, payment uh, website, but only if you've made the decision to contact that company. If there's anyone who's actually contacting you, that is calling you up or emailing you or texting you, uh, do not give out any of that personal information uh, to anyone um, who is contacting you. One example that comes up, uh, and the Sergeant Silla will also talk about for a bit, is the IRS. Uh, the IRS will never call you will never email you, will never text you uh, for anything. They only contact uh, uh, citizens by mail, US mail. Um, so there should be no reason to give out any information to anyone who says that they are with the IRS. Social Security is the same way. Uh, Social Security contacts people by mail uh, and you should not give out any information if someone calls you or emails you saying that they're with the IRS. The same is generally true for other government agencies uh, as well. Um, also on a cold call or on an email that comes to you that's unsolicited, um, you should never pay money up front uh, for any kind of uh, service or what's claimed to be a service or a product. Um, the only time, again, for you to pay is if it's with a reputable business or a charity that you already know uh, and that you uh, have done business with or that you specifically want to do business with. Again, you should never contact um, uh, or pay upfront money to uh, anyone that contacts you for donations. Uh, there are a lot of cor uh, coronavirus coronavirus. Uh, charities out there who are seeking money, uh, but uh, if they're contacting you, uh, then you should not be paying any money up front. If you want to go to um, uh, the Red Cross or to other reputable charities, uh, then you need to contact them yourself, whether finding their uh, correct website or uh, calling them uh, on their published uh, telephone numbers. Um, but you should not be making uh, charitable donations in any other fashion. Uh, those are some of the uh, tips that we would have for folks. Um, and, and finally, let me just say before uh, Sergeant Silla continues on, that there is no treatment or cure for coronavirus. If anyone says that they have something that uh, makes uh, such a claim, uh, you should ignore it. Uh, if there becomes a treatment or a virus, it will be well published. Uh, it will be on the news, uh, or you can call your doctor to find out uh, whether uh, that is uh, correct news or not. Officer Silla, uh, so those are some of the tips for the moment, and I'm happy to answer any questions or proceed on in further detail. Well, thank you, Mr. Kurtz. I really appreciate it. Uh, that's good information. Uh, we will be taking questions uh, at the end. I know a lot of you might have questions during this presentation, but I would just ask if you could just wait until the end of the presentation uh, 
just in case we might cover your question during the presentation. Um, and those of you all that are just joining in on it, uh, with us, I uh, want to appreciate you all for, for joining in. Uh, I'm Officer Anwar Sela with Dunwoody Police Department. Um, Mr. Harold Kurtz from the uh, Federal Trade Commission is here. And uh, we have Sergeant Robert Parsons. And so we want to thank everybody for, uh, for joining in. We're going to just get started with, I'm going to recap a lot of the things that Mr. Kurtz talked about. And so we'll be talking about um, some specifics on what types of scams that we're seeing so far. Uh, I think it's important for people to realize uh, it's not just the coronavirus scams that we're seeing. We're still getting other types of scams. So there are people out there that are constantly, they're busy out there just 24 hours a day. They're just looking for people who they can take advantage of. And what they're doing is they're looking for people who are vulnerable. They're looking for people who they can uh, they can trick into a scheme to get um, money out of their their their, their pockets and their bank account bank accounts. Uh, last year we even uh, we had a case here in uh, in Dunwoody where a victim was scammed out of uh, over three hundred thousand uh, dollars, and so it's happening and it's continuously happening. And like Mr. Kurt st stated, Georgia is uh, one of the top ten states uh, for victims. Uh, fallen victims of, of scams. So these these people that are out there doing that, they know that. They know where their success is, and they're they they apparently find a lot of success here in Georgia. So we think it's important that we actually get the information out there. So right now we're really trying to target uh, these COVID nineteen scams because they're coming in hot and heavy. Um, so let's talk about uh, what types of scams uh, that we're seeing out there. What types of scams is going on as, as far as the coronavirus goes? Uh, we'll be talking about um, the different things that law enforcement and the FTCs are, are, are seeing and what's being reported. Um, first, before we even get into a lot of the scams, the number one thing I would like for everybody to understand is, and this is what Mr. Kurtz just said a few minutes ago, is uh, there is no cure. As of this point, there's no cure or treatment for coronavirus. And it's important that uh, we understand that because that's one of the scams that's going on, on out there. There are people out there saying that they have uh, miracle cures and they have vaccines, uh, they have home test kits, they have things that, that can actually treat the, the coronavirus. And um, like we're going to talk about, the FDA is the only, the, only, um, comp the only organization that can actually say, yes, this, this is actually something that can uh, treat a particular virus or a disease. Uh, so if it's if it hasn't been cleared through the FDA, then um, do not uh, fall into that scam because it is definitely going on going on out there. Let's talk about one of the scams that's been uh, going on. And although we're talking about here in the United States, there are scams that's going around globally. There are people that are falling victim from scams in other countries. Uh, there are suspects in other countries that are uh, targeting victims here in America and vice versa. So it's not just the U.S. issue, it's a global issue that I think we need to address. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about one case in particular. Uh, recently, uh, a man from England was arrested um, after, he was, after he was shipping uh, health concoction called Trinity COVID-19 SARS antipathogenic treatment. The consumer was supposed to add 18 ounces of water, say a prayer, drink half of the solution, take a pro probiotic along with bee pollen, and then ingest the remainder of the solution. So this person actually created this uh, so-called treatment for the coronavirus, and they, they actually came up with instructions on how and directions on how you could, you could, uh, you could use it. And people were actually falling victims to that. This is what the actual treatment looked like that he was selling and, and, and distributing out across the, the world. And people were actually buying it. They think that they thought that this was actually something that worked. And so he was arrested for that. So uh, we just really want to start off letting people know that as of right now, there is no cure. So if you're starting to see a lot of people offering uh, things like that, people might show up in, to your front door with, with uh, doctor lab coats saying that they have a cure for the coronavirus. That is not something that, uh, that has been approved as of yet. So uh, like I said, the FDA, which must approve any drug that is defined as a cure, mitigation, or even a treat treatment that's important to the US, 
according to federal law, has not approved the product for any use, let alone treat uh, COVID-19. Uh, and I want you guys to write this number down because uh, federal att attorneys urge the public to report coronavirus scammers by calling the National Center for Disaster Fraud Hotline. So it's 1-866-720-5721. Uh, these people need to be, uh, we need to make sure that we're calling them out uh, for, for these type of frauds because it's actually putting a lot of people uh, at risk. Here's another thing that's been going on. There's been reports of imposters as posing as doctors or laboratory representatives, and they're gaining entry into nursing homes and assisted living facilities. They're offering face, fake te test kits, as well as um, they're trying to gain Medicare or Medicaid information from residents. Uh, one thing that we've been handling fraud cases for a long time, and they're constantly coming in as of now, and we've noticed that a lot of our victims uh, tend to be elderly. A lot of them, uh, they, they, they tend to target elderly people because uh, a lot of them are vulnerable. They, 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 they want to help themselves or help someone else, or they actually might just, uh, you know, be very gullible to, to believing whatever uh, people are putting out there. So you have people that are targeting our elderly uh, communities by going to the, the assisted living facilities, facilities, the nursing homes, and they're calling a lot of them on their phone numbers and things like that. So uh, our, you know, people that are in our elderly community, they really need to get this information out to them, um, especially because we're seeing so many of them fall victims to this. Uh, let's talk about phishing scams, because this is one that we're seeing a lot as well. Uh, be on the lookout for emails that are asking for verification of personal data including Medicare or Medicaid information in exchange for receiving economic stimulus funds or other benefits from the government. Um, it's very important that we understand that government agencies are not sending emails asking for residents personal information in order to receive funds or other pandemic relief opportunities. And um, uh, be very, very mindful about that. You know, the government is not they're not calling you asking you what's your social security number because we're trying to send you some some uh, relief funds. You know, what, what is your, your bank account information and things like that. Uh, it might be an email that comes in that looks very legitimate. They'll have the, the official seals from the government and they'll have the actual web link that looks uh, very similar to the actual web link. Uh, it's important to understand what the government is going to be asking and what they're not going to be asking because it, it's easy to fall victim to that, very easy. So it's important to understand that. Uh, beware of all emails claiming to be from the CDC and the World Health Organization and other healthcare organizations that's offering to share information about the virus. Uh, yeah, their people are gonna use these uh, organizations to target people because uh, people at this point, folks want answers. That's the, the, the the, um, the important thing that people need to understand. Uh, when scammers realize that we are in a situation where people want answers, they'll use that uh, for their advantage. I'm pretty sure when this uh, very, when the very first case came out, especially here in the United States, the scammers were already uh, ready and, 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 and coming up with a game plan on how they can target victims because they know that people are scared, people want answers, people are, are hurting right now. You got folks out there that, that don't know what to do, what tomorrow's gonna hold. There are people that are in financial crisis and people that are um, uh, losing their homes and their jobs and uh, people are being furloughed. So there's a lot going on in the, in, the, in the country and scammers are using that for their advantage. So they're gonna present themselves as being, oh, I'm from the CDC or I'm from the, the World uh, Health Organization and I'm gonna be the one to uh, tell you what you need to do, but I need this information from you. I need your social security number, your bank account information so that we can get you the right type of information. So uh, be very wary of all that. Very important. Uh, okay, let's so look. Yes. Uh, just to go back to the uh, CDC for a moment, uh, there is a CDC foundation that is raising money uh, to, in order to cover uh, costs, uh, additional costs of uh, their organization and, and uh, raising money for additional 
personal protective equipment for various uh, hospitals and, and other organizations. Uh, people should be wary about somebody posing as the CDC Foundation, and uh, uh, people should only go onto the CDC website if they actually want to contribute uh, to that. Uh, that's one specific thing that uh, there may be scams out there uh, following uh, is that CDC Foundation. Good, good. That's good information to know. And to piggyback on that, um, one of the main things that we tell people concerning fraud is everything is not a fraud. Everything is not a scam. Uh, every phone call or um, every, uh, you know, commercial that you see on, on social media might not be a scam. But one thing we want people to understand is you got to do your research. You got to go out there and look and make sure it's legitimate. Don't just automatically give folks your bank account information or your social security number uh, just because they're saying this or that. Nobody's going to pressure you to do anything right away. And that's the main thing that we're trying to get across to folks because we got scammers that are calling saying, hey, we need your, your information right now or we're going to turn off your, 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 your power within 30 minutes. Or, you know, we need your, 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 your bank account information immediately or we're going to um, come out there and arrest you right away. So uh, a lot of times people that, uh, that scam folks, they want you to make a decision right now. And none of these organizations are going to force you to immediately make a decision. So uh, you, you have enough time to make, you know, do your homework, do some research to find out if this is a legitimate organization, this is a legitimate, um, uh, you know, offer that's being put out there. So uh, thank you for mention that, Mr. Harrell. Uh, I think it's important that people do understand that there are some legitimate things out there, but just do your, your homework and find out what's real and what's not. Um, well, also take extra precaution to avoid uh, spoofed or phony websites by only visiting websites with clearly distinguishable URL addresses. Uh, scammers seek to exploit individuals by directing web traffic to similar but falsely identified website names where they can provide misinformation or attempt to gain consumers' personal information, finances in exchange for pandemic updates. Very important that uh, people understand that you have to uh, look, you, you know, look at what you're doing, look at what websites are being sent to you, what emails are coming to you. Um, once again, do your research, very important. Uh, screening. Bogus calls and text messages. I think this is probably the number one thing that we're, we're getting is the bogus calls and the text messages and the robocalls calls concerning the virus. Um, so during this difficult time, while working remotely or responding to a larger volume of phone calls, it may not be feasible uh, for you to reject all unknown numbers. But if you find that you've answered a robocall, hang up immediately. Don't press any numbers or respond to any prompts. Uh, we do realize that a lot of people are working from home right now. A lot of people are uh, currently, you, you really can't just not answer your phone. Uh, I think that it's important that, you know, you, you, I always hang up the phone if I know that, it, that it's a spam immediately. You can, once you answer the call, you realize that they're, it's an automatic message that sounds like a spam, hang up the phone. Um, if you, <clears throat> a lot of times they'll try to get you to, to, to dial one or dial two. They'll, they'll say something like to speak to an agent about this concern in this phone call, dial one or dial two. Uh, when you do that, uh, a lot of times you're actually putting yourself up to receiving more uh, spam calls. So just immediately hang up the phone um, if you can't, uh, if you can't just ignore uh, calls that you don't know. Uh, scammers are also calling using recordings that might say pressing a number would direct you to a live operator or remove you from their uh, call list, but it might also lead to more global calls. So like I said, um, those, some of those calls that if you all know, you'll hear at the end, they'll say, uh, press one to be removed from the, uh, the call list, to be placed on the do not call list. Uh, a lot of times when you press one or press two, it's not necessarily going to stop those calls from coming in. Uh, that just tells them that this person actually does answer the phone. So you're likely to get more uh, spam calls coming from your phone. So 
immediately hang up the phone or just don't answer it. A lot of uh, phone service providers actually, uh, they can actually set your phone up to where you can, uh, where spams come in and actually say this is a scam or scam likely or things like that. And that's important to know. Uh, similar to email phishing scams, text messages from unknown source sources may offer hyperlinks to what appears to be automatic pandemic updates or interactive uh, infection maps. These are just two examples of ways that scammers can install malware on your mobile electronic device, which is putting you at increased risk for identity theft or financial um, exploitation. So um, yeah, I always tell folks, clicking on links is probably one of the most dangerous things you can do um, when it comes to the spam and scams and things like that. Uh, don't start clicking on links unless you know that it's from a reliable source. Uh, very important to understand that. Let's look at some of the, uh, the, the text messages with the links that, that, are, that have been going around for the last few weeks. Uh, so I know some of you all have seen this, some of you have gotten this on your phones. It says, due to the corona outbreak, we will give you, we will give out emergency money for groceries, Janice. So sometimes they even have your name. They'll still hack into some of these systems and they'll have your name. Um, so you might think it's actually legitimate. And they'll say, click on, and they'll have this link that starts with COVID cash 20. So it'll, it'll sound legitimate. It sounds like, oh, you know, and they know that, like I said earlier, they know that people are hurting. People need, they want groceries, they need money. People are out of jobs. So they're looking for opportunities to receive help for themselves and their families. So uh, these are the things that they're sending out and they're really just trying to scam you and put you more in a worse situation than you're already in. So it says, uh, due to Corona outbreak, we'll give you more money. Uh, so that's a scam. Uh, here's another one. Someone you, who came in contact with you tested positive or has shown symptoms for COVID-19 and recommends you self-isolate or get tested. More information at this link. So uh, it, imagine how someone who really doesn't know anything about scams or somebody who's not uh, well informed about the types of scams that are going around. Um, when they see this, it looks very legitimate. You know, uh, it's something that's telling people uh, you know, hey, you might, you might have been exposed. And so here's information about, you know, you being exposed. And so they'll click on that. And next thing you know, someone is already uh, uh, going to grab information from their phone or things like that. Here's some other ones. Paul, like I said, they'll, they'll say your name. Scientists just confirmed positive results on testing this coronavirus product. Claim a free sample for your family. And they add a link, coronavirus alert. This face mask provides an extra layer of safety. So these scammers, they actually, they watch the news and they listen to the CDC and they listen to the experts and the doctors and they know what people need. They know what people want. They know what people have questions about and they'll flip that and pose it um, to, to be able to, to scam people for that. They know that right now we're in short supply of masks. So they'll create a, a scam alert text message that says, hey, this face mask provides an extra layer of, sa of safety with a link. Uh, hi, Kimberly, no one will be safe from the coronavirus anymore. This is the only survival guide you require to overcome this crisis. And then they put a link. Uh, Louise, are you and your family prepared for the coronavirus? This mask can be your lifeline. Here's another one. You've received a new message regarding the COVID-19 safety line symptoms and when to get tested in your geographical area. Uh, I know at one point there was uh, a lot of, there was, you know, people can't get tested like they, like they want to or, uh, and so people are, scammers are using that as an opportunity to scam folks. Uh, the FBI actually posted this a few weeks on their Twitter uh, they said they want to warn people of this fraud scheme that uh, messaging the promising of money, stimulus checks from retailers like Scott, Costco, and provide a link containing malware, ransomware, or other fraudulent methods to steal identity, financial, or other personal information. So uh, as you can see, $110 goodies from Costco. That's our stimulus package for Costco uh, loyal customers. They'll put a link there and say, fill in this survey and return it, please. 
So, I mean, can you imagine someone that hasn't worked in three weeks and they have four kids and they have a Costco membership and they see this text message saying that they were getting $110 for Costco? All they have to do is fill in a survey. Uh, folks will jump on that if they're not well informed about these types of scams that are going around. So we need to share this, these type of information with our friends and our families and people that we care about and uh, let people know what's, what's going on out there. Tell them don't, don't click on those links, don't click on anything on your phone when it comes out. Uh, those are text messages and here's some, uh, some coronavirus audio phone calls that have been coming in. Um, so I'm gonna read this. This is actually a recording that we're, when someone answers the phone, they say hello. First thing it says is, uh, the Coronavirus Response Act has made coronavirus testing more accessible immediately. If you want to receive a free testing kit delivered overnight to your home, press one. If you do not want your free testing, press two. So they're pretty much giving you, they're trying to give you a no way out option. Either press one if you want it, or press two if you don't want it, rather than you just hanging up. So they want you to press a button, like I said before. Uh, so it's important to hang up the phone. Don't, you know, uh, a lot of times they'll even say, hanging up the phone will only cause more calls to come in. Uh, that's not true. So just hang up the phone uh, so that uh, you, you want, you're not cornered into pushing a button on the phone. Uh, this is another one. It says, uh, hello, this is Brad with an important message regarding the effects of the coronavirus outbreak on your student loans. As you may have already heard, President Trump invoked his power as commander in chief by declaring a national emergency due to the widespread impact of COVID-19. New measures will include waiving interest on your federal student loans up to a further notice. During this time, our offices have continued to maintain full staffing levels and will continue to do so until further notice. Uh, for more information on how these new measures will impact your future, payment obligations, call back today, and they provide this uh, a phone number, and they say, thanks, have a great day. Uh, and it'll actually, uh, the, the recording will sound very believable, sounds very professional, uh, it doesn't sound like something that would be a scam, uh, but these are scams that, that people are using. Let's talk about some of the stimulus payments, scams that are uh, going on. I know a lot of people have already received their payments into their bank accounts, uh, but there are still uh, millions of people that are expecting uh, checks to come in the mail. So the scammers are still out there uh, working to try to get people to, to, to um, fall victims of, of the stimulus payments. <clears throat> Since scammers are using these stimulus payments to try to rip people off, they might try to get you to pay a fee to get your stimulus payment, or they might try to convince you to give them your social security number, bank account, or government benefits uh, debit card account number. Like I said, a lot of people have already received their payments uh, in the mail, I'm sorry, uh, in the bank account. And there's still millions of people that's supposed to be getting uh, a check in the mail. But right now, scammers are really targeting those that are, try are waiting to get the check in the mail by telling them, hey, hey, if you fill out this information, we'll get your, your, your payment to you quicker. Or we'll be able to cash up to you. Or, or things like that. So it's important to realize that, um, that, that those are all scams that people are doing. This is important for us to realize concerning the stimulus uh, payments. Only use irsgov slash coronavirus. I need you guys to write that down, take a picture of it, screenshot it. Uh, remember that if anything that has to do with questions about your stimulus payment, you wanna to go to that website. Don't click on any text messages from an unknown source, uh, websites, emails, phone calls, those are not reliable. Only use irs.gov slash coronavirus. They've specifically created a page uh, regarding the stimulus uh, payments. So that's how you can submit information to the IRS um, and you won't get any kind of phone calls, or text messages, or emails. The IRS will, will not contact you by phone, email, or text message, or social media. 
with information about your stimulus payment or to ask you for your social security in our bank account or government benefits, debit card, account numbers, things like that. Uh, anyone who does is a scammer fishing for your information. Uh, you don't have to pay to get your stimulus money. So uh, some you might have people out there saying, hey, your, your, your check is scheduled to be delivered to your home in four weeks, but we could have it rest delivery to you in two weeks or uh, overnight, we can have it FedEx to you. These are all scams that are coming in. Uh, let's see. Don't respond to calls or messages. Uh, we're gonna recap a lot of the stuff that we've talked about for those of you that are just joining in on uh, with us. So I'm gonna kind of recap it and then we'll take questions at the end. Uh, this uh, this uh, presentation is gonna be on our Facebook Live. So if you need to go back to it, or if you need to uh, share it with someone, you can do so. Uh, if you're watching now, please do share this with your, uh, your, your friends and people that's on your, your Facebook so that we can get this information out. Let's recap what we've talked about. Uh, once again, don't respond to calls or messages from unknown or suspicious numbers. Uh, even if the number looks legitimate, scammers often spoof phone numbers to try to trick you into responding. Keep in mind that, that the government agencies will not call you to ask for personal information or money. I want to talk about that briefly. Uh, I've responded personally to uh, tons of calls uh, concerning fraud where uh, a scammer can actually sp uh, spoof the phone number to, to show up as the, the actual um, IRS 800 number. You know, so on your call ID, it would actually show up to be a, an actual IRS phone number. Uh, and so you would think that it's legitimate, but it's actually them spoofing that phone number. They've actually even spoofed phone numbers to uh, show up as the Dunwoody Police Department's number, or it'll say 911 on there. Uh, I can tell you right now, nobody's gonna call you from 911. You're the one who's supposed to call 911. So you got people that would actually they look at their phone and it says 911 and they all, oh my gosh, the cops are calling me. And then they'll answer the phone and they'll say, hey, this is the police department. Uh, you need to do X, Y, and Z, whatever they want them to do. So uh, just remember, uh, just because it looks legitimate does not mean that it's a, it's a legitimate phone number. Very important that people understand that. Uh, do not give your username, password, date of birth, social security number, financial data, or other personal information over email, text, or uh, phone. If you're being pressured to share information or make a payment immediately, that's a red flag. Like I said before, scammers are trying to get you to act quick. They don't want you to do your research. They don't want you to talk to a family member or a trusted person. Uh, they want you to act quickly. But I'm here to tell you, uh, no legitimate organization is going to make you act immediately. They'll give you an opportunity to go talk to somebody if you need to. So anytime somebody is soliciting money from you or information, personal information from you, Talk to somebody you trust. Um, you can drive down to the police department and ask a police officer, hey, is this legitimate? Is this, is this an actual real uh, situation? And we'll tell you whether it is or not. And people have done that before. Um, <clears throat> don't open any attachments or click on links and text messages or emails from sources uh, you don't recognize. Verify web addresses and type them character by character into your browser. In other words, uh, if someone is sending you a link from that says irs.gov uh, slash COVID-19, that might be a scam because like I said before, the, the, the link that the IRS is providing is irs.gov uh, slash coronavirus. So they might just change it to say COVID-19 just to kind of throw you off thinking it is a legitimate uh, website. So it's important to know what is legitimate and what is not. So you're not uh, setting yourself up. Uh, check for common misspellings or wrong domain names in a link. Uh, an address that should end in .gov might end in .com instead. Uh, very important to realize that. Uh, do your research, your research before donating to a cause or charity. Call or look at his website to verify that it's legitimate and never donate cash by gift card or by wiring money. Uh, like Mr. Kurtz stated, there are some 
some legitimate donating causes out there and charities concerning the pandemic. And I think it's great for people to actually donate to legitimate organizations. I think it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a good, good thing that we have here, um, but it's just important that people know what's real and what's not. Uh, don't fall victim to, uh, to something just because you're trying to be uh, a good person. Uh, we, we would hate for that to happen. Um, and, the, and gift cards, like I've always said, uh, gift cards are made for gifts, not to make payments, not to, uh, to, to, you know, for anything but gifts, really. That's why they're created, is for you to give to a friend or family member as a gift. So uh, nobody's going to, no legitimate organization is going to make you make any payments through gift cards. You get a message from a friend that seems out of character, call them to make sure that they weren't hacked. Um, I literally just answered a call a week ago where a, um, someone's LinkedIn account was hacked and they started sending messages to all of their friends on that, uh, uh, that's on there. So the person thought it was a legitimate message and he, was, he ended up being scammed uh, by about $3,000 uh, over the course of the conversations that they were having. So um, if, if you ever get an email or uh, from another social media site, a message from one of your friends that looks like a legitimate um, message, make sure you make contact with them uh, over the phone or, or in person before you, uh, you give any information or give out any money. Make sure it's legitimate because people are falling victims to that daily. Once again, let's remember this and recap on that, that there are no products that have been proven to treat or prevent coronavirus uh, currently. So ignore any offers or products that claim to do so. Um, Mr. Kurtz uh, from the F FC, uh, uh, for the FT, is that the right FTC. website? Uh, that one is an FCC, a Federal Communications Commission website on that one. And I'm wondering whether that should be FTC, because we do have a, we do have an FTC.gov/coronavirus uh, set of uh, information. Okay, so uh, the the Federal Trade Communicate uh, Commission, the FTC, and the FCC both have websites concerning uh, coronavirus scams. So we'll make sure we put uh, the FTCs on there. This is the FCCs. So. Uh, Take this information and, and, and make sure that you're sharing it with folks. And um, because here's the thing about scams, we've covered a good bit of it just now, but we want to make sure that uh, you understand this is not all, this isn't all the scams that, that are going on. There are people that are constantly coming up with new scams to, 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 to trap people. So you need to stay informed, uh, stay educated about what's going on out there concerning scams. So uh, briefly, we'll be able to take a few questions. Um, <clears throat> anybody has any questions about the presentation that we've been given so far? Uh, let's see. Uh, Officer Silva, let me uh, emphasize one additional point that you were making. Uh, if anyone gets a call from the IRS that uh, people have to make a payment immediately, or if they even get a call from a debt collector saying that uh, you owe us the money immediately and we're gonna send out the sheriff to arrest you uh, later today if you don't, uh, all of those are fake calls. Uh, no legitimate person is going to seek to get payments in that fashion. Absolutely, yeah, yeah definitely that's uh, good information to have. Um, Sergeant Parsons, is there any questions that are coming in? Good evening, everybody. This is Sergeant Parsons. I've been interacting with a bunch of y'all on the back end in the chat uh, during the webinar. Uh, most of the questions have all been answered. Most of them were surrounding the, the government payments uh, from the IRS. And we addressed in that webinar how it's important to go to irs.gov and click on that link in, within that site. And there's a frequently asked questions page. There's a, a status page where you can check on the status of your payment and all of those things. Um, the only other question we got was regarding to video, if we could post this possibly on the website or somewhere else. And we'll certainly look into that. I know some people are not on social media, so there is a possibility we may be able to uh, save this off and maybe put it on our YouTube channel. Um, if they can, if might get to the website, they should be able to get also to a YouTube page 
um, or send the link from the Facebook live video to somebody who might not even be on Facebook. Um, but we will definitely explore that and try and get that posted elsewhere so you can share this with your friends and, and other people um, and hopefully you know, pass, spread the word about again, these critically important messages and Officer Sela did a, did a great job and Mr. Kurtz hopefully bringing some of this uh, to your to your not collective knowledge is that you know that this kind of stuff is going on as sad as that is. If you ever have any other questions, if you know if something comes up later, you can always email us at community outreach at dunwoodyga.gov. We're happy to answer your questions um, anytime. If, if something just doesn't seem right and you say, hey look, I want just to ask somebody's opinion, feel free to reach out to us. You know, we'll be happy to give you our opinion and, and let you know what we think and maybe how you can investigate it or get a little more information. To, uh, to see if what you're, what you're uh, dealing with is possibly a scam. Well, we certainly appreciate everybody taking time out of your night to, to watch this. And again, spread the word uh, in your communities to people who may not be on social media. Uh, some of our uh, elderly population, as Officer Sela pointed out, you know, if, if you're able to communicate with them over the phone, maybe give them a phone call and say, hey, uh, watch this thing tonight and just wanted to pass on some information. Um, if uh, it might be helpful for you. So just take care of those in your neighborhood, take care of each other, and just help us get the word out. Sergeant Parsons, uh, Sergeant Parsons, I have uh, two other comments to make. One is that if anyone does want to file a complaint with the FTC, they can go on our website, ftc.gov, uh, and there'll be a place there for them to fill out a, a complaint form. And the other is whenever I do talk to a group uh, I do emphasize the fact that everyone should fill out their census form. Uh, this is the month of April when everyone should have uh, gotten a census form in the mail, uh, and it's very important that, that everyone in the country fill out uh, their census form. It's important for a variety of reasons, including uh, federal funding for the programs that people depend on. Yeah, great, great point. Um, I know our, our, we've put a lot of information out on the city of Dunwoody social media about that. You know, census is very, very important. It's important to be counted. So make sure you're, you're filling out those forms. I don't see any other questions right now, but again, if, if anyone uh, has any questions at a later date, you can email us community outreach at dunwoodyga.gov. Um, we'll be happy to, to help you out. Awesome. Well, we appreciate everybody for uh, tuning in. Thank you all for, uh, for you know, sharing this and telling your family, your friends about this. Uh, we're going to keep continuously posting on our social media outlets. If we come across any new scams that are uh, developing over time, we want to make sure that we get the information out to you all. Uh, Mr. Kurtz, I really appreciate you once again for uh, coming on and giving us some good insight, very helpful information. and. Um, I want to thank everyone again for viewing it and uh, we hope everyone stays safe and we'll get through this together and want everybody to know that everything will be okay. Now have a good evening.